by sales of more than $10 billion worldwide. And it's also the number one item on many lists this Christmas. But some teachers and parents fear Pokemon has taken too strong a hold on children and family finances. More on this from Glenn Connolly. Can I do two of these for him? No way. Sorry? I'll trade you all these for a Pokemon. No, no. This is a stock exchange for 10 year olds. But here, there's only one currency. I'll turn that your one. toes off for Sydney. What, what hold oh, on? You? you don't have to These kids are dealing in the cutthroat world of Pokemon, a concept toy with its own TV show, movie, Nintendo game, and endless list of accessories. Oh, I forgot, I've got Porygon, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> I go to Porygon first place. After just one year in Australia, Pokemon has relegated Tamagotchi, Barbie and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to the back of the cupboard. Well, we've sold uh, close to half a million interactive games and uh, over two, two million trading card games. In Australia, Mr Pokemon is Gavin Bust, national marketing head of Nintendo. While Nintendo own the property, um, kids in their own mind, I think they believe that they own Pokemon. Thank you. With more than 30 million trading cards sold in Australia already, the card game has given children a billion dollar business and language of their own. What's the most valuable card? Charizard. 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 It's Charizard. It's, it's, it's this one. Oh, okay. And why is he the most expensive? Well, he's really, really good. He's, really he's good. like, um, he's got the highest HP and he's... Um, yeah, he's got 120 HP. And What's HP? And um, it's health. It's how much light. It's health. How much light? Yeah. How much light? Oh, okay. Do your parents understand the game? Not a clue. Because you're the, this guy? No, really? This guy's stronger than him. But by their own admission, this trading game has winners and losers. Do you trade every day? Um, no. I used to at school, but it's, it got banned from school, so I usually trade when I go to people's houses. What did it so. get banned for? Um, because some people were playing in class and some older people were ripping off little people. Some trick tactics sometimes when the littlies didn't realise um, that the cards were worth something and only later on would, the, would they realise what they'd given up. Vicky Simmons, head of the Kingswood College Junior Campus in Melbourne, is one of dozens of school principals to ban students from bringing Pokemon cards onto school grounds. Some of the young kids were giving older kids holographics for things like Weedles which are really bad, which uh, can't do zip. And so what happened here? Uh, the younger kids got upset because they, they lost their really good Pokemon. Apart from bullying, there's the issue of obsession. So you really want children to have a variety of, of interests rather than be focusing obsessively on one thing. Some of them um, get addicted to them, they get quite obsessed with them and they aren't very rational about how they're prepared to uh, get them. Some, some of them can get quite violent. Media analyst Tony Jupe says following US fads isn't always healthy here. There have been reports of children stabbing each other over cards of um, even a couple of deaths um, which uh, uh, at the time can be attributed to arguments over uh, whether cards were um, owned by one child or another. Another reason why they banned it out of school because some, peop some people yes, have real valuable cards and some people try to swap them but they said no. But when they went to the tuck shop they used to go into the lockers to take their cards, well most of them. But still. I think it was just a bit difficult with the young to ones control to it. control mm. it. There is that bullying aspect mm. to it. Yeah. Yeah. The standard, the tactics. Been, there's been bullying with everything, mm. every fad, oh. every craze at school. I mean, mm. we had just regular swap cards at my age. Well, Pokemon is highly desirable yeah. with kids, and I think as a result of that, uh, kids go to extraordinary lengths to, uh, to get their hands on it. Uh, I don't think it's anything new. I think we've seen it with marbles and yo-yos and uh, different fads before. And I think we've even seen it with Nike shoes. From 7.30 in the morning when the daily Pokemon TV show airs to the after-school wheeling and dealing of card trading, Pokemon has a stranglehold on the hearts and minds of Aussie children and the wallets of their parents. My son's just had his birthday two weeks ago and of course all, he invites his friends and the mothers are all, what do I buy, what do I buy? And I said, oh, Pokemon. 
That's, that's all he wanted. Bullying and obsession aside, there are only two things on the minds of these mums this Christmas. One, how do I get hold of Pokemon cards in times of short supply? And two, how much do I have to spend? So, I mean, this is a Christmas thing. I think this Christmas is going to be Pokemon. Mm. Um, and, yeah, we're all waiting to hit the shops to buy these cards for them, except, or whatever, but they're all sold out. You just can't get them. I and it's Glenn Conley there trying to get his head around Pokemon.